In this session, I'm going to go over a couple other basic arithmetic functions using Microsoft Excel. So earlier we learned about finding the totals here for a bunch of numbers. And then we learned about the autofill feature. We learned about finding maximum, minimum, and average, and count. So now we are going to learn some basic financial calculations. So let's say you're doing payroll or you're doing some kind of expense report or something of that nature. And this is one of the key features that you'll use in Excel. So let's say you have the pay for these employees and then there are deductions that you're taking off their pay for various reasons. You want to calculate what the total for their deductions is and then you want to calculate their net pay. So in this case, first let's format this into dollar amounts and then let's go back and calculate here what the total for deductions would be. So the easiest way to do that, so in this case, like we learned earlier, is equal sign, sum, and then it's going to be the total for the two deductions. Just simply select those two references. It is important, I cannot stress this enough, instead of you calculating 234, 43 plus 54, 83, always use the references, the addresses for those values. Because the reason for that is because if you change the value in the future, your formula is going to be broken. So you hit enter, and now we have 289. You could do the same thing for the next one if you needed to. However, we can be wise and simply use something that we learned from before. We can use the autofill feature. Just hold the mouse on the bottom point here, and then drag it down. So these are the totals for the deductions. Now let's calculate what the net pay would be. So that would be the gross pay minus the deductions and that's what they would be taking home. So in this case, what we need to do is we put the equal sign and then we take the C23, the total pay, minus the deductions the total deductions. And then we simply hit enter. So in this case, we don't necessarily have to use a function for like after the equal sign. We are just doing the calculation between two values. So we hit enter, and this is the total for that employee. Again, equal sign, first reference, minus the deductions and hit enter. Again, we can use the autofill feature here. So that was the subtraction. Now, if we wanted to, let's say, find out, let's say this is, let's do the annual net. So let's say that we are gonna find how much that employee is making a year, whether it's, in this case, let's do it simple, uh, the net pay. So what we do here is equal the amount times 12. In this case, I usually do not recommend that you actually put static values in there, and I'll explain the reason why. So for now, we say 12 months times that, so that comes to 41,000. You do the autofill, that's their net pay. Now notice, whenever you see this, these number signs here, what that means is that the column here, it's not wide enough for this number to fit in. So what you have to do is you move the mouse between the two columns on the top and you just expand it or you can you could have double clicked on it and it will have expanded it exactly to the highest or to the widest point. Now let's say that we want to calculate the pay per week and I want to show you how you do division in Microsoft Excel. So if you only to do the division or the pay per week, now so we suppose this is 41,000 a year. So we do the equal sign, whatever the amount annual is, divided, div division is represented by 
the slash and then 52. Hit enter. That's the weekly pay for that employee. So that's division. Again, it's the slash. The multiplication was represented in the previous calculation here. It's represented by the use of the asterisk. Those are the four functions, so you can utilize them in uh, most of what you'll be doing in Excel. It can be, you can be 90%, I would say, is going to involve those four functions. The adding of a whole bunch of numbers, the subtraction that you learned from here for the calculation of the net pay, and then the multiplication and then division as well. Then you can incorporate also those other functions that we covered earlier. Now, one last thing before I move to the next section here. I mentioned earlier that it's not recommended that you use actual numbers here. For example, the, to calculate the annual pay times 12. It's best to just somewhere, instead of using 12 there, you could say pay periods. or And then you just set it at, say, 12 over here. So use a reference point. So in this case, instead of you having it as 12, you could have that referencing J17. The reason for that is because you might say, okay, well, what would be the pay period for six months? So you could just change it simply to six, and now it will update it automatically. You don't have to go and tinker with the formulas. Notice here I had this formula. It was J17, and when I did use the autofill, it, these became just blank. The reason for that, I'll explain it in the next video. That is a good uh, way for us to move to the next video here.